Today, I'm going to pop the lid off the question that every homeowner has been thinking, and that is when and how do you get paid when you sell your house? So sit back, take some notes, because I'm going to make this way more complicated than it needs to be, and we're going to get started right now. Welcome back to All Things Knoxville with me, Ben Barreto, your local real estate pro and relocation expert for East Tennessee. Before we jump into today's video, I want to remind you that I make videos like this every single week. So if you like this content, make sure to like this video, consider subscribing to help out my channel grow and be part of connecting me to buyers and sellers across the country who might otherwise and never know I exist without your help. Lastly, if you're thinking of moving to East Tennessee or somewhere in between and you have questions, need information or answers or whatever the question, whatever it is, if you need a great realtor, give me a text, shoot me an email, sign up on my website. I love what I do and sharing that information with other people and I'd love to help you too. Now with all that out of the way, let's jump into today's video. So if this is your first time selling a house, then you might wonder how it all works when you finally sell and close. When and how are you going to get that check in your hand? Maybe you're selling in a new state. Either way, it's not always obvious when you can expect to get paid and many people aren't comfortable handing someone the keys to their home before the money for their home is in their bank account. So let's break down how it works in general. Before we begin, full disclosure, what I'm about to tell you might not conform to your state and local practices. So definitely check with a local agent or title company or real estate lawyer if you want to be sure on how it works in your area. But overall, these generally are the same from state to state. So when you sell a home, you get paid as soon as you complete the closing process. All right, cool, video done, let's go. No, seriously though, in the closing process, the lender works on the loan, both parties sign uh, a lot of documents, and the title company works on cleaning and transferring the deed and title to the new owner. How quickly you get paid depends on your state, but most of the time you get paid on the day of closing. However, there are a few states called dry funding states that require a short waiting period between the closing date and when the lender approves the loan so in dry states, you won't get paid until the lender approves the loan and sends the money to your closing agent. After you accept an offer on a house, you have to go through the closing process. This usually takes a few weeks or more depending on how quickly the buyer gets their loan approval and whether you run into any problems or complications with the home or the title search along the way. Let's take a second and refresh or introduce to those of you that are new to this, uh, to the escrow process and what happens behind the scenes. So first off, during the escrow process, there's gonna be a title search that happens when the closing agent runs the title uh, through a search for discrepancies, they order title insurance, and they work on transferring the deed. Also during this part time, there is a home inspection, which is when the buyer checks the integrity of the home and the honesty of the seller. Following the inspection, there's usually some negotiations involved uh, regarding repairs or cost of repairs uh, or uh, things like that. Then there's an appraisal that usually follows, and this is when the lender wants to make sure the home is worth what they're, the buyer's borrowing. And finally, the seller then starts to move out and the buyer prepares for what's called the final inspection, which is done usually the day of or a couple days before closing. What happens on the day of closing? Well, once you make it to the closing date, you'll sit down with your real estate agent and the closing agent, which is an impartial third party who facilitates the sale. And then the buyer might be there with their agent and you'll sign several documents or a bunch of documents. Who handles the disbursement of funds at closing? Well, that is usually gonna be the title company. When the buyer's lender approves the loan, they'll send the money to your closing agent who holds it in escrow until the sale is complete. If, you're, if the buyer is a cash buyer, you're still gonna get the money from the title company. An escrow account uh, where the money's held is a financial account 
that a third party manages on behalf of both parties, the buyer and the seller. Now, usually the money isn't dispersed until the day of closing, which can sometimes hold up the process. Once you finish closing, your closing agent will be the person who sends you money for selling your home. Now, how, you, how do you get that money is another story. When it's time for you to get paid for selling your home, the closing agent will give you two options, either a paper check or a wire transfer. And while both options have their pros and cons, a wire transfer is usually the faster and safer option. But we'll get into that shortly. If you opt to get a pay if you opt to get paid by check after selling your home, your closing agent will usually hand it to you right there at the closing table before you walk out the door. So you do have the sweet satisfaction of walking out with the money from selling your home in your hand. But that doesn't mean you have access to that money because you have to go to the bank and you still have to deposit that money while carrying that large check to the bank, which is unsafe on its own, deposit the money in the bank, and then usually the bank is gonna hold those funds until the check clears. Your bank can hold any check deposit over $5,525 for up to seven business days. This delay makes taking paper checks risky, especially if you expect to close on a new property right away or you need access to those funds immediately for something. So to reiterate, the pros and cons of a paper check are pros, you can get the check on the closing day and walk out of there with it in your hand. The cons are that you still have to carry that large check across town to the bank and maybe lose it or have it stolen or something like that. Or then the bank can hold your funds for several days. Now, wire transfers are the most common way that sellers get paid uh, after closing. If you choose a wire transfer, your closing agent will send the money directly to your bank usually within 24 to 48 hours of closing. While you may have to wait a day or two for clo the closing agent to send the money, you can access that money as soon as the bank processes the transfer and it's in your account. Fortunately, banks have a clear rule for when they do that, with most banks processing a wire transfer on the same day it's received. One possible delay, though, is your bank's daily cutoff time. Now, if a wire transfer comes in after that set time, the bank won't process it until the next business day. So instead of getting the money today or tomorrow, you might get it the next day. You can talk to your bank to find out when the daily cutoff time is and then just get with the closing agent and make sure that you arrange for the money to be wired before that time. So to reiterate, the pros of wiring money is the money goes directly to your bank, it's safer and it's more common, and you can potentially access the funds on the same day of closing. Now the cons are if the closing agent misses the cutoff time of that day when they send the money, that you're not gonna be able to access that money until the next day. So before we get into the last couple of tips, I wanna allow you to grab a great tool. And this is a great tool for anyone that owns a home, whether you're thinking of selling or not. But if you are thinking of selling, it's gonna be an amazing tool for you. If you're if you want to sell your home for top dollar or if you just want it to look good, then you should go download my 10 DIY home staging ideas to sell your home fast. In this guide, you'll find simple steps that you can take right now with little to no cost out of your pocket to set your home up so it looks its best and will guarantee that you'll get a bidding more and an over market value offer on your home when you decide to sell it. You can download it at the link in the description. So how much do you get paid when you sell your home? In most cases, you won't pocket all of the sales price when you close on that home. You'll usually have some expenses that need to be paid before you can take home the profits. Uh, maybe a mortgage, commissions, and some other things. Fortunately, you don't have to worry about writing a bunch of checks and make sure all the right people get paid. Instead, your closing agent uses the proceeds from the sale to pay everyone, including you. So you'll basically get what's left over. You'll be able to see where your money goes a few days prior to closing when the title company sends you uh, a preliminary closing document uh, or statement. This document shows you the sales price and then all of your expenses and final proceeds from the sale. Also, your closing agent will send out the money to pay your remaining 
uh, mortgage balance so you don't have to worry about that either so you pretty much just show up at the title company and you then sign some docs and get paid unless you own the property free and clear you'll have to pay off your existing mortgage first of course but that's taken care of uh, at, by the title company before closing your lender will send you and your closing agent a loan payoff notice telling you how much the final payment will be including any fees and prepayment penalties next let's talk about closing costs for the seller that and these can be anywhere from eight to ten percent of the final sales price but they vary based on your contract with the seller and the vendors you use throughout the closing process. Your closing costs are made up of a several smaller fees that can add up pretty quickly. Some of the most common ones that a seller faces are one, the real estate agent and commission that can usually run anywhere from as little as 2% to as much as 6 or 8%. Uh, this is a number negotiated before you list your house, so you'll pretty much well be prepared for or, or will be well prepared for that number. Uh, another cost is going to be the title search or the process of searching public records and confirming that the property is legally your property, which could cost a few hundred bucks. Title insurance is a policy protecting the buyer from problems with the title, like an unfound lien or a disgruntled family member that thinks the house should be theirs. The escrow fee is another fee charged by the closing agent for facilitating the sale. And then there's the transfer tax, which is a tax it's a separate from property tax uh, that some states charge when you transfer the deed of a property to a new owner. And then finally, if you have any outstanding amounts owed outside of that. Some other expenses that you may uh, pay depending on how you negotiated the sale of the house uh, with the buyer are usually the buyer's closing costs. Sometimes, usually not in the market we're in now, but a seller may agree to pay some of those closing costs. And those can be anything from the loan origination fee, home inspection, survey fee, appraisal fees, mortgage points, and lender's title insurance. The last thing to touch, the last thing to touch on is property taxes. How does this work? Well, when you sell your home, you may have to pay both property taxes and capital gains taxes. You'll pay your property taxes at closing. Your taxes will be prorated from January 1st to the date you sell the property with the buyers paying the rest. Capital gains taxes are due when you file your annual tax return, but you may be able to avoid those taxes altogether. The tax code includes some generous exemptions for capital gains on the sale of a home. You can write off up to $250,000 in profit on the sale, $500,000 for married filing jointly if you meet three tests. One, you, had, you have to have owned the home for at least two years. Two, you've used the house as your primary residence for at least two of the last five years. These years don't have to be consecutive either. And a third, you haven't excluded the profits of another home sale in the last two years. Of course, always talk to your CPA or accountant to make sure that you are making the right choice and that the information I'm giving you is also correct. Well, listen, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it came out a day late, but listen, I had some clients in town. I had to show them around and I had no time to get to this video. Uh, but thanks for stopping by. As always, if you need anything, just ask. You know how to get a hold of me. And until next week, have a great day and bye-bye.